This is Paul Burns, the Director of Education from ACP, and I'm going to present a, a simple presentation on IP cameras. Um, Thin Manager 4 does support IP cameras, and this will be a brief little uh, webinar showing you a little bit about the IP cameras, um, show you how it's done. It'll have a short PowerPoint and then a, a demonstration. And if you're interested in a more extended version, um, I believe this Thursday we have Thin Manager 303, which is a uh, three-hour presentation of the inner workings of Thin Manager. Earlier in the day we'll have Thin Manager 101, which covers what's new and different in Thin Manager uh, 4. It'll go through uh, term secure and IP cameras and some other things. And then in the afternoon we do 303, which does the 101 presentation for an hour, which is PowerPoint and demonstration, and then it adds an additional two hours of PowerPoint or of two hours of demonstration of the inner workings of uh, details on display clients, uh, term secure, and um, IP cameras to give you a more in-depth look. This is a webinar, which means you can listen and you can't talk. The um, 101 and the 303 this Thursday um, do allow um, conversations, comments, and things like that. So there is time for a discussion there. And you can go to um, thinmanager.com and go to the events page, and it will list um, when where that is. So IP cameras are uh, now incorporated into Thin Manager 4. The Thin clients can display um, motion JPEG video. Um, that is the only protocol that we support right now. You can't do the H246 uh, or anything else. We do support the motion JPEG. And most off-the-shelf hardware, if it runs motion JPEG, will work with us. Uh, you know, generic ones uh, we have in our um, TermCap database, AirLink Access, D-Link, and TrendNet. And if you have a camera that uh, you're trying to use and can't quite get it to work, uh, you can send it to us, and we'll take a look at it. And you know, we may be able to add that one into the to the uh, term cap, so that you can just pick it out of the list, and it works right off the shelf. We've done that a, a number of times with cameras. Uh, most of the ones that are listed there are just you know the uh, you know the generic ones that you the home uh, the home and business ones that you would buy, like at uh, Circuit City or Radio Shack. But I know that Axis has a, a line of industrial ones, so you can go from you know low end ones to high end ones with Axis that are more industrialized. And what the IP camera does is it allows you to add IP cameras into your system, make them viewable on the thin clients, and not need a whole separate um, video network in order to see what's going on. And it's relatively simple what you do when you get the cameras you have to add them to the network and you would use the configuration tools that come with the camera to do that follow their instructions give it the IP address and add them to the network then in thin manager you define it as a display server and then you deploy it as a display client and it's that simple run two wizards and you're able to see the video what happens is the terminal will go to Thin Manager and get its configuration. The configuration will tell it you need to run this video from this camera, this size, this location, or whatever. The terminal will connect to that camera over the internet, um, over the uh, you know the Ethernet, and request that video feed. And it will need the uh, username and password of that camera in order to access it and make that request and then the camera will send that video stream to the terminal where it displays it in the uh, format that you've selected. So it's relatively simple and uh, works. A few terms that need to be uh, discussed. The first one is display server and that's the source for the terminals display. In Thin Manager we used to have on our tree terminals, terminal servers, and terminal server groups fairly self-explanatory. The terminal is what was running out on the floor and they connected to the terminal server to get their session. 
And then the terminal server groups was if you wanted to run an application, you could group the servers together for failover and things like that. Well, when you add cameras, you can't put them in the terminal server category because they're not terminal servers. They're equal to a terminal server. So we had to create a new category called display servers. And that includes the terminal servers and the IP cameras because both of those are providing display for the terminal. So we'll see that when I go to the uh, Thin Manager tree. Now the old uh, terminal server groups or application group needs to be changed because you know what's the partner to server? It's client. So the display clients is how that output is displayed. So you know that's a little bit of terminology change in 4.0 is we've gone to display servers and display clients and the camera is a display server and it you have a dis camera display client to display that video. You also have an overlay which is the frame of the video output and you can have a camera display client that has an overlay that shows the camera or you can add that overlay to an existing display client and have video within another application. So with the overlay options, you have the target. Where do you want that video to go? You can adjust its size and location. You can scale it. You can crop it. You can do any number of different things with that display. You know, you can have, as I said, a camera display client of just cameras, or you can have an overlay into a regular display client. So when your display client, you can make it take the uh, image and make it a full screen or you can make it a uh, smaller one where you put the overlay within an existing canvas or you can have a split screen where you have two overlays one camera on the left one camera on the right you could have a two by two grid you could have a uh, three by two any number of different uh, grids and combinations you can also drop the overlay into an existing application like an HMI so that in your HMI you're able to see the camera output. You can do cropping within Thin Manager. You can in the in the uh, overlay configuration you can crop it so that you're only getting part of the picture. You can scale it so that it expands out to fill the whole screen and you can crop it without scaling and you'll get the uh, black bars, you know, like for letterbox, if you do that. You can also cycle the different cameras in there, and you can have multiple cameras in that overlay and click in there and select them. There's also a camera connect tab, so that once you've configured your camera from Thin Manager, you can go back in and reconfigure the cameras and make adjustments when it's in there. Now the one um, the one thing that I should warn you about, all this video processing is on the thin client. So if you're cropping, scaling, doing things like that, it's the thin client that's doing the cropping and the scaling. In my opinion, your best bet is to run your video in the same format that the camera's putting it out. If it's putting it out as 320 by 240, display it as 320 by 240, display it in a one-to-one -one relationship. If you decide that it should be shown as 640 by uh, 480, then the thin client is going to have to expand it and fill in the pixels. Likewise, if you shrink it down to um, 240 by 160 or whatever, then the thin client is going to have to drop out the pixels. And so you're putting more work on the thin client you're better off setting the camera to run the video that you want and then display it as it comes out of the video to take a less load on the thin client. And if you're going to deploy cameras, I wouldn't take the eight-year-old thin clients that have been running in your factory for eight years and expect them to do the video. Um, the newer, faster, more powerful thin clients with more memory, better video chipsets would handle the video better than you know, a uh, 4824 that's, you know, eight years old. So just throw that in there.